Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, y'all are having a wonderful day today. So, of course, I could not miss out on talking about the most recent, very entertaining Super Bowl game between that of the Philadelphia Eagles and that of the Kansas City Chiefs. I thought that I would personally talk about it because not only was this a great Super Bowl, in my opinion, but there was a lot of history accomplished here. And, of course, overall, we could talk about Andy Reid. We could talk about the Kansas City Chiefs. We could talk about all that. But, of course, we all know who the main person is in the limelight, who was the main person overall that was going to get all the attention whether he won or lost and that of course is quarterback Patrick Mahomes for that of the Kansas City Chiefs well now that he's won his second Super Bowl out of three appearances only within I believe about six years of playing and the fact that he's also won multiple MVPs two MVPs when it comes on it there now is a great consideration or certain people asking is he truly the greatest quarterback of all time and I've been talking about this for a very long time, that people would be debating him as the greatest of all time if he wins his second NFL championship or his second Super Bowl championship. And I was pretty much correct. But in this video, Ryan Clark and a few other people, they're going to discuss where Patrick Mahomes is personally in their rankings, how great they believe that he truly is, and overall what discussion he truly deserves to be in. And I think it's a very interesting conversation. I'm going to talk about, in my opinion, my personal view of Patrick Mahomes and what I believe about him. And overall, is he a guy that deserves to be in the same level as a Tom Brady, a Joe Montana, or maybe some other guys? You know, what level does he truly deserve to be on? But anyways, let's get into it. Let's see what they have to say. This is what Patrick Mahomes did that I mentioned Tom Brady didn't do. Nobody but Tim Duncan and Bobby Orr did in their first six seasons to have two league MVPs and two MVPs in the championship round. You see the entire... Tim Duncan is one of the most underrated players of all time in NBA basketball history, no doubt about it. You know, I did a video uh, just a few days ago, I believe, on the LeBron James versus Michael Jordan debate. And in my opinion, it really isn't that much of a debate. I believe that Michael Jordan clearly is greater than that of LeBron James. And I think because of the way that he plays in his ball dominant style, that that has cost him championships. Where LeBron James, in my view, and not everyone is going to agree, especially if you're around my age of, you know, anywhere from your early to mid-20s to, you know, early 30s, somewhere around there. You're not going to agree with this. But in my opinion, LeBron's not really in the conversation with Michael Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and uh, what's his name, Bill Russell. In my opinion, he's not in, in their category. In my opinion, he's in the Larry Bird and Tim Duncan and Will Chamberlain category. That's where he is. Because all those guys, they pretty much were around the same level of impact and value. Um, it just is what it is. There's a reason why LeBron James is 4 and 6. It just is what it is. And a lot of people, of course, would say, oh, well, you know, LeBron didn't have help, but that's a lie. Uh, if you take a look overall at Tim Duncan's teams, a lot of the times throughout the early 2000s, you'd be very surprised at some of the teams that he was even able to drag to the NBA Finals in the first place. And the fact that he was able to win them made it that much better. Pretty of the list in the history of the four major sports. Patrick Mahomes, the performance just spectacular in every way. And that's where it begins. We have all morning long here. Put your feet up. We're not going to be commercial free for the next 15 minutes uh, here. So we will have plenty of time. And RC, I will start with you. You were there to see it last night. And as you can see, Ryan still in Arizona. What are the right things to say this morning about Patrick Mahomes, who went into halftime yesterday? We weren't sure if he was even going to be able to finish the game. And he was essentially perfect after the break. What do we say about Patrick today? Well, unfortunately, Greeny, he won the game. And so now we got to go back to all that stuff you were talking Friday. Let's talk about legacy. Let's talk about Patrick Mahomes, where he ranks on the all-time list, because this is our seat. This is the conversation. If Patrick <laughs> Mahomes wins this game, they're going to come out of this game. And what's it going to be? He's the greatest of all time. Well, you know, you look at Patrick Mahomes and you think about the way he was able to will this team. And Travis Kelsey is absolutely out of his mind. There were people that picked the Kansas City Chiefs and thought that they'd be good. They thought that they'd be good because of Patrick Mahomes. And coming into this game, he had a... I thought that the Philadelphia Eagles personally were going to just edge them out. And they probably should have, but... The Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes, he's staying calm, cool, and collective. And that's one thing I also got to give him credit for. Uh, listen, I said a while ago that, in my view, he was very clearly going to eventually become greater than that of an Aaron Rodgers and a Drew Brees and a Dan Marino and a Brett Favre and, you know, uh, 
uh, Steve Young, he was going to clearly become greater than those guys. Or Russell Wilson, if you want to put him there too, maybe. Although I think he's about a level below those guys. But it's very clear, in my opinion, that Mahomes, that he's a level above those guys. Right now, in my view, the level where Patrick Mahomes is at, at least if he continues his statistical you know, run, and on top of that, his Pro Bowl runs, right where I think where he is, at least in my view, is that he's right there with John Elway and Peyton Manning. Uh, that's where he is. But uh, it's going to be very interesting, once again, to see where he goes from here. Ton to prove. He had to show that he could go out and perform at this level on this stage without having a true number one receiver. And that's what he does. And Dan mentioned it. When Patrick Mahomes goes down late in the second quarter, everyone in the arena, everyone in the stadium is saying, please, Patrick, get up because they have no chance without you. The execution in the second half between Patrick Mahomes, the offensive line, Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy was absolutely phenomenal. And the way that he willed this team to, the, to a win at the end of the game speaks to his leadership and his heart but his talent is unquestioned Patrick Mahomes for me is now in the conversation with Joe Montana now in the conversation with Tom Brady and no he's not close to the GOAT yet but when you look at the way this man plays the game well if he's not close to the GOAT then <laughs> how is he overall in the same conversation with Joe Montana and Tom Brady that doesn't make any sense Ryan <laughs> just uh, listen I think I understand what he's saying that obviously Patrick Mahomes, that he's a league above most quarterbacks. And I think Ryan Clark sees the same exact thing that I do, that more than likely Mahomes is probably going to have a great chance to become greater than even that of a John Elway or that of a Peyton Manning. But we don't know that yet. So overall, we're going to have to see. I understand what he's talking about, though. Because if you're talking about just with what he's been able to accomplish so far in his career, uh, you know, when it comes down to that, oh, then yes, I understand that he's on his way to that conversation, but not yet. As opposed to the talent that anybody else has ever played it with, he's already the best we've ever seen. And now if he continues to stack hardware, stack wins and stack more legacy games, he's going to be the greatest that has ever played. Yeah. I, I, and I don't. He has a great potential to be that. What I'll say is this. This is my personal opinion about Patrick Mahomes. And this is what his goal should be. Now, of course, the goal always is to be the greatest that ever lived when you're a great competitor. But just my standards for him personally, uh, he should at least be, in my opinion, at the end of his career, if he plays for, let's say, 15 to 17 years, he should very clearly, at the very least, be at least the third greatest quarterback of all time. Because Joe Montana and, you know, Tom Brady, they're pretty hard to surpass, in my opinion, uh, of course, a lot of people, they disrespect Joe now because they're like, oh, he never had a 4,000 passing yard season, blah, blah, blah. But Joe Montana was the only multiple MVP winner of the 80s. And on top of that, he was greatly statistically significant, had the greatest completion percentage and quarterback rating and touchdown to interception ratio of that time. And on top of that, was able to win three Super Bowl MVPs and win four Super Bowls. He created a dynasty with the 49ers when they had never won in the past, from what I believe. So... Overall, that's what Joe Montana was able to do. But anyways, once again, Patrick Mahomes, at the very least, I'm not quite sure if anyone's ever going to 100% surpass Brady because I just don't know if I'm ever going to see another team make, or excuse me, another person make 10 Super Bowls and win seven of those Super Bowls. But if anyone has a chance, at least so far from what I see, it's Patrick Mahomes. I think it's unrealistic to say that he is starting his career in a way that would suggest he can get to that. It's the fastest start in a variety of ways that we have ever seen. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer if he retires <laughs> today after six seasons, which is... Certain people would not agree with that, but I do. I think that if Patrick Mahomes does retire today, that he is a first ballot Hall of Famer. And I think that he only has about five or six Pro Bowl appearances. But it's very clear that he would at least be a Hall of Famer. I don't think that there's any doubt about that. Remarkable. That's like Gale Sayers kind of territory from a quarterback's perspective. I mean, describe the performance last night, what we saw from him, particularly in that second. Heroic, a vintage. I thought his performance was phenomenal. And for someone that has had a little bit of problems in the Super Bowl in the past, I didn't really see a lot of mistakes overall from that of Patrick Mahomes. So I have to give him a hell of a lot of credit. I truly do. Uh, because once again, in that 49ers game a few years ago, he really was not that good at all. He threw two very boneheaded picks in my opinion and that had not been for jimmy garoppolo and certain mistakes by that of uh who the hell is that one 49ers coach i don't remember uh <laughs> for the life of me overall i can't remember over what the hell his name is but had it not been of certain errors when it came down to it 
and Jimmy Garoppolo probably not being an elite quarterback. Patrick may have not overall uh, once again won that game. And then, of course, Tampa Bay, they did not even give him room to breathe. So this really was a proving type of game. One of the best we've ever seen from him. I don't think we can, like, understand how impressive it was. They had the ball for 24 minutes, Kansas City. They scored 31 points. That's ridiculously hard to do against a defense that led the NFL in sacks. I thought Andy Reid's understanding of motion and how to create matchups was fantastic. I thought Patrick's ownership of the line of scrimmage was fantastic. And we talk I agree, and let me get let me give kudos to Andy Reid. Because I used to believe that Andy Reid was a very overrated coach, and at times he certainly has been. Uh but let me tell you what, he certainly overall has been coaching very, very well. Uh, now that Patrick Mahomes has been on there, do I believe that his career has been helped out a lot but because of Patrick Mahomes? Yes, I do. But he performed very well in the Super Bowl yesterday. Very well. Talked about the advantage that the Philadelphia Eagles defensive line was going to have against this offensive line. This offensive line pitched a shutout. Orlando Brown Jr. and Andrew Wiley, we got to give them a lot of credit because that was a defensive unit that there was dominant this year. And in many ways, Patrick helped them by getting the ball out so quickly. Uh, but... Like, last night's performance, to hold the ball for 24 minutes and score 31 points, he understood the margin for error was zero because of how Philadelphia was playing. I agree, and I don't remember him overall pretty much having any errors. I don't believe he had an interception. I don't think that he ever fumbled the ball once. Patrick Mahomes was very calm, cool, and collective yesterday, and that's what separates him from that of the Aaron Rodgers and the Drew Brees and the Dan Marinos and the Brett Favre of the world, which is that overall, and Steve Young, which is that when it comes to those pressurized situations, he's just better than them. And that's what makes him better overall than those guys. It just is what it is. Now, the question once again will be, can he surpass Peyton Manning and John Elway and Roger Staubach? Because that's the area where he's kind of heading into right now. So it's going to be very interesting. And certain people don't have Roger Staubach that high. I personally do, because you can debate him as the greatest quarterback of the 1970s. I would even though, of course, he never won an MVP, but you could debate that he could have a couple times. But anyway. Playing on offense. And he never missed. Yeah. Like, he never missed against the defense that was absolutely spectacular. They just won three playoff games. He threw yeah. seven touchdowns and zero interceptions. Ooh. Yeah, that, that's what elevates. That's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I would have to take a look at that stat, but that's a lot, that's a lot like what Joe Montana did. I believe a couple of times back in the day, like I think there was a playoff run where Joe Montana had like 11 touchdowns and zero interceptions. Uh, like a lot of people really don't understand how great Joe Montana actually was. Him to the next level, right? I can't put him above Montana. He's on that on that trajectory, but I can't put him up to that level yet. But what happened? I agree with you. Ryan Clark is getting a little bit too excited. What is usually when a young quarterback wins the Super Bowl is because they're cheap. And the roster around them is so great with veterans. And Mahomes lost some of his depth as far as his premier A-class players. And, you know, we see the great, like, Drew Brees couldn't do it, right? We, we look at Russell Wilson, he couldn't do it, right? But what happened is not... Yes, absolutely. Uh, and that's what is the difference once again. That's why I put Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Dan Marino, Brett Favre, Steve Young. That's why I put them all in the same category. Now, of course, you can debate who's greater uh, between any of those guys because uh, they're all around the same category. But they're grouped all within the same category because what they have proven is that they're only usually going to make one Super Bowl appearance or win one Super Bowl, and they pretty much have to have the all-around perfect roster to do that. What the all-time greats of the greats do, like that of a Michael Jordan or that overall of, you know, maybe that's of a Patrick Mahomes, a Tom Brady, is that even when there's certain things against them or even when maybe they're losing certain teammates or when they have a different type of roster, they can still somewhat make it work. And that's what Patrick Mahomes has showed us, that even without Tyreek Hill, that even without certain players that used to formerly be there, that he very clearly is the main value piece of this team. How that he was able to elevate and be a force multiplier, much like the, the GOAT did when he had Pat, uh, Patton and he had Branch and then he had Hernandez and Gronk. Like, you have to be able to become a force multiplier when you take more of the salary cap. And I think he's proven that he is that type of quarterback that can elevate the talent around him. And it's more about it. And just think, he talked about... Yes, and that's what you're supposed to do in a team sport. Many people, of course, they take a look at, you know, certain people like a Peyton Manning or a LeBron James or Aaron Rodgers, you know, or a Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, and they love to take a look at it. Now, Ronaldo's a little bit different because 
he's had more success in certain tournaments overall than what maybe some of these other guys that I'm about to mention because soccer has so many different types of tournaments. But anyways, when it comes down to it, when it comes to LeBron James, like oftentimes his fan base would be like, oh, well, you know, all you guys count as championships, you know, that's a team accomplishment, you know. But but then apparently when he wins, apparently they mainly win only because of LeBron James. Well, I thought it was a team accomplishment. Uh, the truth is, is that if you're supposed to be a, revolution, a revolutionary player, someone that is supposed to be a multiple-time MVP, and someone overall who is supposed to be that guy, you're supposed to make the team around you greater. To the point to where, overall, as long as you have some sort of talent, that you're a Super Bowl competitive team. And that's what Patrick Mahomes overall has proven. Aaron Rodgers can never do that repeatedly. Russell Wilson can never do that repeatedly. At least once certain weapons started leaving the team and that Legion of Boom started breaking up. Steve Young could never really do it repeatedly. Brett Favre could never really do it repeatedly. And Drew Brees can never do it repeatedly. What Patrick Mahomes has showed us is that whether his defense is top five or even just top 15, when it comes down to it, or, you know, the offense, even though, of course, still very talented, but when they lost Tyreek Hill, he's still going to bring you to an area to where it's either going to be the AFC Championship or the Super Bowl. That's what he's shown us. So that's what makes him greater than any of those quarterbacks I just mentioned. About his first Super Bowl, how he didn't understand how to read defenses. That was mastery of understanding what cover zero is and cover one. Understanding on the first uh, touchdown to Kadarius, it was cover one, and they rock and roll the safeties, and he caught them in transition, quick snap. That's, that's an Andy Reid thing. Right, but, that, enemy thing. But, but, sure. but, but, but he had to – you heard Patrick Mahomes say cover zero, cover zero, which is totally different. That means it is no safety. It is nobody that can pre present help. And for him to understand that and to make the proper check, that's also him recognizing that all those defenders were straight in a flat line with signals cover zero. Sure. That's understanding reading defenses. The, the one thing that is constant in the sports right now, in the sport, is that we're comparing everyone to him. Right? Like the beginning yeah. of the season. Is Josh Allen ready to ascend? To, yeah. and, and is Joe Burrow, is he ready to ascend? Is Jalen Hurts ready to ascend? The guy we're comparing them all to is Patrick yeah. Mahomes, and it feels like he's going to be there for a while. RC, I'll start with you. You played in the defensive secondary in the National Football League for a long time. Just to talk about all the other quarterbacks, at least at the current moment in time, if we're talking about anyone that's comparable to Patrick Mahomes, I just don't personally see anyone at the current moment that is really that comparable to him, at least in the current league. Josh Allen has a great chance of potentially winning something later on, but his IQ is going to have to improve. And on top of that, that defense is going to have to get better. That defense from the Buffalo Bills has been the most overrated defense throughout the league within the past few years. Unquestionably, the most overrated defense when it comes down to it. You know, Joe Burrow, of course, has great promise, but he's shown us overall that in his last couple of games where he's been in the big moment that he has, you know, kind of not performed quite up to par, but he's still a great quarterback. We'll see overall what he does. Uh, and really, other than that, I just really don't see a lot of other quarterbacks that can truly compete with him. Uh, Russell Wilson had a very horrible season with Denver. Who knows? Maybe he'll get back, but he's shown problems with pressure. Aaron Rodgers is pretty much done, in my opinion, in terms of ever winning something ever again. Tom Brady, I believe that he's retired, but even if he comes back, he's not going to be the same quarterback that he once was. As he just seen in this most recent season, uh, Lamar Jackson, a lot of people like to hype him up, but he's a quarterback that is never going to lead you to a Super Bowl. Uh, he's a main guy that, you know, he can, you know, win with his athleticism. But a lot of the times when you force him to throw downfield, especially accurately, he's going to make a lot of mistakes. Just like that of a Cam Newton or that overall of a former running quarterback, a Colin Kaepernick, yada, 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 yada. So just to talk about other quarterbacks, I just really don't see... Anyone now, of course, you still have Justin Herbert out there. You have Trevor Lawrence, who are kind of on the come up, but it's a little bit too early for me to tell where they're going to go. So we'll see what happens. But anyways, you know, it's going to be very interesting. Did you think it was a good call? Because it's it's a holding. Now the 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 question about whether or not it's a good call is we look at the moment, we look at the fact that the ball is thrown out of bounds, and we say to ourselves, he's within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Did it affect the play? Is that the call you should make at that time? But the call is absolutely right by the letter of the law. You can hate it all you want. You can think that it ruined a great game all you want to. But James Bradbury grabbed on to Juju Smith Schuster two times. And if this this is the first 
uh, quarter of this game, if this is the second quarter of this game, if this game is a blowout one way or another, then we're sitting here and we're saying, hell, nobody cares about the flag that was called when James Bradbury actually, actually held Juju Smith-Schuster. You can look at the play and see exactly. I personally missed the play. So I can't really commentate on it, but a lot of people look exactly what from, happened. A lot of people apparently from what I heard did not like the call. If you've ever played in the secondary, he got the motion down to a to a Z nasty. He thought he was going to get the crosser, tried to stay inside. He got a whip route. He held him. That's what you're supposed to do. It's better to hold him than to give up a touchdown. And that's what he did. And now we're asking the official who has been taught his entire career to watch those two particular players and see a hold and not call it because it ruins our game. I get it. Maybe Arian Foster slid the official to script before the game. And the script might have said, don't call this if it happens. But it happened. James Bradbury admitted to it. You could see it on the film. I hate it, too. I hate it, right? We all right. wish that we could have seen this game play out differently. And well, no, you don't, Ryan, because let's be real. <laughs> uh, you don't hate this because Patrick Mahomes is your boy. He's your guy all in all that you want to promote as the greatest of all time. So, no, you don't hate it. Stop lying. Jalen Hurts get the football late in the game with an opportunity to tie or go ahead. But it's the correct call because when you look at what James Bradbury did, it's a holding. Yeah. It is the one unique circumstance where actually giving up a touchdown yeah. would have been better. They would have been better off if he had caught a touchdown. But the point is remains. Here's the question before I give it to Dan. You guys always tell me, and I want to ask a corner, yeah. that you could call, there's a lot of penalties, holding and others, that could be called on practically every play of a game. And last night it felt to me like they let everything go. There were very few flags thrown. And so that's the piece of this. If that is the penalty, if that is something that happens frequently in a game and they were letting it go most of the night, to call it in that situation is the part of it that might frustrate well, some fans. if you don't call it in it, it's a hold. You have the argument going the other direction. I'd rather get the call right. It's okay to be disappointed without blaming somebody. Like, I'm disappointed too because I wanted to see it finish away. But as a cornerback, when your eyes are in the backfield mm -hmm. on a whip route right there, like that, all you can do is grab and Bradbury admitted to it it was a hold I wish they wouldn't have called it but I honestly I wish it hadn't happened more than anything you have to call it if it happens and you seem to disagree absolutely probably the smartest take overall that that man has ever said I don't remember overall that dude's name I think his name is Dominic Foxworth or some shit like that usually this dude's takes are so brain dead and horrible <laughs> uh, is there a hold Yes, there's a hold every play like we talk no, about. Is it, is, is it enough to throw a flag? In? Guess how many holding penalties were thrown in that game before this play? Zero. One. Right? There was one. One. Yeah. On, on, on both sides of the ball. Right. For both teams. One. And so in this moment, and, and here's my thing. Watch Juju's reaction after the play. All right? I've been around receivers all my life. Does he look like a dude who's screaming hold? Bradbury's reaction on that play is to say it's incomplete and there's no call. Bradbury's reaction exactly, on this play. Exactly, because he knows no, it's a hold. No, his reaction on the other play is to say that it's a penalty. Dead. So you're going on player reaction. Use Dead. your eyes. He right. grabs him. Like, I wish he didn't. I'm a DB. He I grabbed him on the previous, the, the, the first it's, play it's, that I showed this you. Is ironic, he did. This is ironic, Greeny. He did. This is ironic that we did, have did the offensive the player telling. Hold on. Did they throw the flag in the first play? It don't matter. Is it a hold? Did he hold him? Did he admit that he held him? You can call hold at every play Hard. on Here's the offensive question. defensive Here's line. Here's my question. Not on the outside. On the early clip that I showed of the game. I don't care about the early there, clip. Was there a hold? I don't care about the early clip. I care about in the moment. Is that a holding? The yeah. man admitted that he held him. No, we're, we're, all, about, we're all agreeing with I agree with that. And listen, bottom line is this. Even though people may not like the certain call, let's be real. Because, with that part. What, what? Because most people overall probably wanted to see Patrick Mahomes end up losing this game. Uh, it just is what it is. Listen, at the end of the day... Uh, if the Eagles, all in all, didn't want to lose this game, they probably should have scored a little bit more earlier on. They had them on the ropes heading into the second half, and the Eagles allowed them to catch back up. Saying What I think Dan and I are saying is, no. if you don't yes. call it all game long, you sort of set a no. tone for the way the game is going to be officiated, and then in the big moment it feels this is a like you did it differently. No, this is a different type of holding. Tell me this why. Is a because it's a whip route. So that means you got to stop, redirect, and get back to top speed. Mahomes threw to a spot because of the timing route. That's different. That's a slant. A slant, you can work through contact. It's hard to read. That's called a whip route. So to go in, pivot back out, and wheel up. holding flags dependent upon the route? Bro, I'm telling you, that, that, that ball. Well, it depends overall the distance. 
ball was thrown to a spot, and it wasn't out Here, of bounds. Here's my question. Was it holding? Did yes. Bradbury say he held him? Yeah. So you call a call. Here's That's the my difference question. The Super I would agree with that. Well, here's my question without arguing. The first clip early in the game, okay. is there holding by Bradbury? It yeah. looks like it, okay, yes. Is there a flag thrown? There is no. not. Is there a reaction by Juju? Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. about the reaction? Was it a missed call? If the, when, when, they, when the look, refs go through stop, the stop, stop, stop. Well, listen, what I'll say is this. Uh, at the end of the day, we can't judge things overall based off of prior missed calls. So, you know, no offense, don't vote to the man over on the left in the blue suit, but I just don't think that that's the best of arguments. It is what it is. Uh, you know, like I said, you don't not call something because before it was not called. You know, when you have the opportunity to call something, you have to call it. Say That's something. Can I say something? Go. <laughs> Can I say something? The, the difference is, right, you go back to the early play, that that would have, have to be called pass interference, and he didn't necessarily turn Juju that stopped Juju from catching the football. I think that's why, if you ask me, that call wasn't made. It wasn't a hole. The ball was on the way. He tugged on his arm, which is normally where you wrap so you could come around and make a play. The holding at the end of the game, when you see the shirt pulled in that manner, that's a call you have to make when it's in I agree. Extended. It's the same thing with the with interior linemen. When interior linemen have a have a defensive lineman wrapped up inside, right, and their hands are tight, they don't call it. Call it that that interior yeah. lineman extends away from the offensive lineman, and you see a shirt tug, then you call it. The official saw the shirt of Juju Smith Schuster pulled, and when he saw that, he called it. I get the argument. That's the the argument is this: if you've let a call go before, then let it go again. That's not real life. That's not the way it I works. Agree. They miss. I agree. And you have to wonder if the guy on the left that if he truly wanted Patrick Mahomes to win this game or not. Because oftentimes when people complain about that shit, it's because the wrong side ended up winning for them. So it just is what it is. Calls all the time. Because I remember when the New Orleans Saints versus LA Rams ended up happening about five years ago. Probably one of the worst missed calls. Probably the worst missed call that I've ever seen in a playoff game where there was clear pass interference and the refs did not call it. I don't ever hear anyone say, oh my God, you know, it's a good thing they didn't call that because it was the end of the game. <laughs> like, it just is what it is. You have to make calls when you see them. Maybe they missed the one earlier. So now they didn't miss it. Officials in their mind aren't thinking, well, you know, in the first quarter, there was that little tug on Juju and I didn't call it then. So I, I agree. Better not call it now, because they're going to say that I'm not consistent. Hell, we know they ain't consistent. If you're James Bradbury, you can't hold there. You can't put it in the official's hand. Dan, I hate it too. But there's no way to explain it in a way where that's not the right call. I agree 100% with Ryan Clark and the rest of the panel there. But anyways, that's very better for this conversation. I just thought that that was very particularly interesting. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see where Mr. Patrick Mahomes ends up going from here. Very, very interesting uh, career that he's had so far. I cannot put him in the GOAT conversation as of yet because, of course, in my view, it's just way too early, especially to compare him to Joe Montana or Tom Brady. But he's on his way. No doubt about it. He's on his way. He is the real deal. No doubt about it. But anyways, that's all we've got it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you all later.